Hi, this is Kelsey Jones, Executive Editor at Search Engine Journal. I'm joined here today by Eric Inge. He was just named the Search Marketer of the Year at the Landys, and he is the CEO and founder of Stone Temple Consulting. Eric, thanks so much for coming. Uh, you know, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to it. And congrats on your win. That's awesome. Uh, you know, it's a very exciting moment, but you know, there's a lot of people involved in any such award and have a great team and a lot of great support and very proud of all of them for helping make it happen. Yeah, for sure. The team in the background is always important. So. It absolutely is. <laughs> so I wanted to talk to you today a little bit about machine learning. Okay. I feel like you have a lot of good insight on that. I think it's a hot topic right now. People are kind of scared, worried. They don't know if they should change their strategy when it comes to SEO. Could you just kind of touch on that and your thoughts and where it's going and how, what it's changing? Yeah, no, I'd be happy to. Uh, so I think people hear this term machine learning or even artificial intelligence and they leap to that the world is going to be turned upside down. Uh, pretty soon humans are going to be obsolete uh, and uh, everything we know, yeah, and everything we know uh, about our world is going to be changed. And what they need to realize is that in terms of like fundamentally disrupting SEO or digital marketing, we're just not there. Uh, it's not something that's going to happen that rapidly. Yeah. I've actually had the experience of building machine learning algorithms and we use some at Stone Temple Consulting. And what they do is they take the same kinds of things that we already know to look for anyway and they optimize on, on those. So in the world of SEO, that's things like they want great content. Yeah. Uh, they want to find the most authoritative uh, you know, pieces of content. Well, that sounds a bit like links. Uh, and then they want to find things that users like. And we know that these are all things that Google already cares about today. Mm -hmm. So I don't see like the world being turned upside down by this. Yeah, I think people are just worried because they don't understand it. So is machine learning just constantly evolving based on what we search or maybe kind of you know, calm the fears a little bit for us? Yeah, well, I mean, it's probably helpful for me to give a simple example. So imagine you had a table of uh, five houses and you know what they sold for and you knew the number of square feet per house. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you have another house where you know the number of square feet and you want to decide what to sell it for, you could probably look at that table and figure out what the sales price should be. Yeah. A human could do that. The problem is, as soon as you realize that the number of bathrooms, the number of rooms, the size of the lot, the city it's in, and all these other factors enter the mix, the equation becomes very hard for a human to do. Machine learning is really good at solving a, a problem like that. Um, and that's kind of a lot of the kind of activity that's going on right now. But don't get me wrong, the sophistication is scaling rapidly, okay. but it isn't like it's going to start applying seven new factors that no one ever thought about and SEO is going to be gone in a year. It's not going to be like that. How does uh, prediction work? So I know, um, you know, like AI or even Google autocomplete, it, it's predicting what we want to see and do. How does that play into SEO efforts going forward? So, well, from a, a machine learning perspective, what you do first is you give the algorithm in one step some data called a training data set. Okay. And then the algorithm learns from the data what it is it wants to look for. Uh, and now when you have new examples that were not in a training set, you feed it into the machine learning algorithm and it can make a prediction based on an algorithm that it calculated out of the training data set. Uh, and that is actually extremely powerful. Uh, and it's, it's in use, for example, in Google News. If you look in Google News and you see that there's a news story on some topic, like the presidential debate, and they chose some article to show first, and then you see a bunch of other related articles listed right there. Well, those related articles are actually gathered by an, uh, a machine learning algorithm in use at Google. And it knows to recognize that these other articles are similar based on the content to the one that they're currently showing as the lead story. Yeah. Uh, so that's an example of a machine learning thing that Google is doing right now. 
uh, that's actually particularly interesting. Yeah, and you, you brought up content. So to kind of close out our interview, um, how does content strategy play into machine learning or vice versa? Well, so from my perspective, Google's objectives have really been the same all along. Uh, so recently I saw a data point that showed that if they slowed their uh, search results by half a second, that revenue dropped 20%. Wow. Um, and so the reason why I share that example is it, it's an example of how user satisfaction with the search results is a big deal. Yeah. So Google has a very strong incentive to serve high quality results. There's other studies that talk about other aspects of how um, their revenue and performance goes down as uh, satisfaction goes down. So given that that's the case, they are going to look for people who are getting the best interaction overall with the user set. Uh, and how do you do that? Well, if you have users who trust you and they uh, expect you to be helpful to them and that you have a good reputation with, um, they're going to actually have better engagement with your site and they're going to give better metrics off to Google. And how do you create that? You create that by offering great service, great products for sure, but another way to do that is content marketing. And you can actually proactively publish editorial content that helps people build that relationship even before they become a customer with you for the first time. And it has big benefits in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Well, Eric, thank you so much for joining us. A lot of good info. So My pleasure. <laughs> thank you for having me. Again, this is Kelsey and Eric at PubCon. Hi, my name is Brent Satoris. I'm here with Search Engine Journal. Uh, I'm joined today by Gary Yesh, uh, Chief of Sunshine and Happiness at Google. That's uh, right. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this Thank morning. Thank you for having me. Um, there's been a lot of discussion, on, I don't know, a lot of discussion, but there's been some decent discussion recent about uh, Penguin. It's, oh, I, uh, it's, I, I, I never heard about Penguin. So. No, no. no. They, they've been running around here chasing you, so. <laughs> um, Becoming more of a part of uh, the, you know, the everyday algorithm, the live yeah. algorithm. Yeah. And uh, okay, summit is the three takeaways. Yes. Rapture. Yes. I'm leaving with way more. I also like the single session format for conferences. I agreed to be a speaker here because I think above all else, the, the quality of people who attend the meeting. There's something to be said about the fact that um, you can't just hey, come. Uh, it's by invitation only. What I really like about the speakers is that it's a very well-rounded.